hello, Zuko here. If you don't know, my name is Jess, but I go by Zimmy on the internet because one time I was 15. So today I wanted to talk about the five pretty popular authors that I will no longer be reading, not because of anything like controversial or anything they've done, but because I haven't like vibed with their books. And of course, disclaimer, just because I don't like these authors doesn't mean you're not allowed to. I love that there are different authors for different people and we don't all love the same thing. So don't be mad at me. I don't know. I feel like we're all old enough that we don't have to be mad at people for not liking the same things as us, but you never know. I think we're going to go from like least controversial to the ones that might make people more displeased with me and my choices, but that just feels like the best way to do it. Maybe. I can't decide. Should I number them? Or does that make me like top five worst authors like Watch Mojo video? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just start with the first author that I will not be reading anymore. And that would be Jeff Vandermeer. So if you don't know, Jeff Vandermeer is like a science fiction-y new weird author. <laughs> new weird is the genre. I don't think he is a new and weird author, but he does write weird books. So a couple years ago, I watched the Annihilation movie because it was like popular and well-liked and everything. And I didn't like it. I thought that it was too vague and open-ended and I just don't like that in movies. I thought it was like one of those movies that really wanted to be known as like a film and like had that pretentious air to it that I didn't I didn't vibe with but I wanted to be like well maybe the book is better because generally they are right mm -mm. Mm -mm. The book was not better and I don't even remember if I finished it it was like a three or four hour audiobook like it is a tiny book and it was awful it was so rambly stream of consciousness writing that like you didn't know or care what was going on I can't believe this was made into a movie because it was just such a uh, bleh, book where nothing was happening and nothing mattered. I liked that none of the characters were named. There was like the biologist and the whatever else and they didn't have names. I liked that but then it just went into the stream of consciousness ramblings of the main character and I just hated it. It was awful. And next since I think I bought it on Audible for like four dollars I read This World is Full of Monsters and I didn't like that either. It was so short. It was like a 45 minute audiobook and it was just so bizarre in a way that like my brain just was shutting off it's like i don't want to follow this i refuse and i think i finished that one too but i couldn't tell you how it started let alone how it ended not even completely because i don't remember but because my brain refused to have any of it just like exist in my brain space it just floated around my head the audio just like existed out here and never went in my head so that was that was strike two for jeff vandermeer and lastly i tried to read the Peculiar Peril, which was his new YA beginning of a of a series. I was so ready to love it, even though I'd heard like meh reviews that like maybe it was really slow or whatever. I was in I was in for it. I was like, I'm gonna love this book. It's gonna be great because I had heard it was a portal fantasy. I was mildly interested once I started reading until they introduced the like evil disembodied reanimated head of Napoleon. And I, something about like a groundhog or something I don't know it just it got so this one felt like it was trying to be lol so random like 2007 humor like everything in this book felt like something that would be put in like a little quote for your msn profile picture <laughs> it's just so bizarre for the sake of being bizarre and not for the sake of being interesting so after three not so good experiences with Jeff Vandermeer's books I have accepted that I just don't think Jeff Vandermeer's brand of weird is my brand of weird and there's no point in me reading them just to give them bad reviews and not enjoy them when I could just not read them and save the reviewing for people who enjoy them because like why would you read something you know you're gonna hate just to give it a bad review seems counterproductive maybe that's just me yeah that's that's the first author that I will no longer be reading on to number two number four are we going backwards? Is it like worst to best? So that was five and this one's four or is that one one and this one's two? I don't know. On to the next author I will not be reading. And that will be Mary H.K. Choi. So I read Emergency Contact and I think the second book is Permanent Record. They're not a series, they're both standalones. And I can't remember the plot of either of those books. I Maybe one of them. One of them I just, it's gone. It doesn't exist in my head. They're just so forgettable. They're such bland YA new adult I don't know like just contemporary romances which is already my least favorite genre but the characters then are all kind of just shitty people 
I don't want to read about people I don't care about doing things I don't care about. But the problem is that Mary H.K. Choi always gets such beautiful covers. Like, I think the newest book is called Yoke, and it's like bright yellow. I love yellow, and I want more yellow books on my shelf, and it's like all my self-control not to buy it, even though I know I won't like it. But like, why would I want to read it? I don't. I don't want to read it. I just want to own it. And that's not good enough. So yeah, I just, Mary H.K. Choi's books are not for me. And I don't, honestly, I haven't met anyone who really likes them. So like, let me know down below if her books like really vibe with you. Because yeah, I just haven't seen anyone who did. So yeah, now we're on to the next author that I will probably not be buying ever again. That is a like, I feel like younger audience is like, probably like, I feel like this is a 15 year old's like favorite author, but that would be Adam Silvera. So I think the first Adam Silvera book I read was What If It's Us with Becky Albertalli. Hated that book. It was so bad. It was so, it wasn't for me. Nothing really made sense that was being done. I'm really talking with this hand specifically. I need to stop. But like, because that was written with someone else, I wanted to try like books that were just written by him because maybe that was the problem with the books. So the next book of his I picked up was They Both Died at the End. Now the characters in They Both Died at the End were literally just reskins of the characters of So What If It's Us, or I guess the other way around because I think They Both Died at the End came first, but they were the same characters with different names. Like their personalities and like kind of backgrounds were pretty much the same. I liked They Both Died at the End more than What If It's Us, but I didn't actually like it. Like I felt like the world building was just not there and I didn't care about this world where no one explained why they knew why you were gonna die. Like it seems like it could have been random that they just called you and then hoped for the worst. Like, I don't know, I wanted world building that I didn't get and I didn't like the characters, so yeah. And lastly, I tried Infinity Sun, Infinite Sun, that start to the fantasy trilogy, duology? I DNF this halfway through. It was so bad. The world building sucked. The characters sucked. Everything about this book was just awful. I think that Adam Silvera does a lot better with contemporary romances than he does with fantasy. And I don't really like how he did those either. So yeah, that was it. That was, I'm like, I can't do these books anymore. I had History is All That You Left Me. Like I owned it and I unhauled it. I'm like, I'm not reading this. I don't want to. I'm done with these books because after three books that I didn't really like, why would I keep reading them just to give them bad reviews and waste my time? That's not productive for me or the author. So yeah, I can't tell which one to put here because like I can't tell which one I think would make people the most mad at me. But I think I'm gonna go with Elizabeth Acevedo, which is nothing against her writing. I think she's probably a very talented writer who's writing things that I know resonate with a lot of people. But I don't like novels told in verse and the majority of her novels are told in verse and as I just don't like poetry it's not a medium for me so I can't judge whether or not her books are good when they're it's just not a style that I vibe with like I find it really like kind of disjointed and it doesn't flow the same way a novel told in prose does to me so I just think there's no reason for me to keep picking up her books when I know that I don't like the genre and I don't like the style that she tends to write but I know that she is a talented writer I just don't think there's a point in continuing to pick up these books when they're in a style and a genre that I don't really like and I know that they are a talented and competent writer but they're just not a writer for me. And lastly this one's the one I feel like everyone's gonna be the maddest about because for some reason this author is like beloved on booktube I guess in general. I feel like they're just like really hyped up and I think they are a terrible writer and that is Becky Albertalli. <laughs> I I don't know everyone's pronouns and that's, I'm sorry if I misgender anybody, I believe she goes by she, her. Why are there no pronouns in their Instagram? Okay, it says her on her website. So I'm gonna assume that she uses she, her pronouns. I don't wanna misgender anybody even if I don't like their writing. So I'm pretty sure that Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda was the first Albert Alley book that I read. And I was like, that's it. This is so mediocre. And also can we stop writing like coming out stories that involve blackmail. I don't know if that's like still a thing, but it definitely has been a thing for too long. Not this relatable thing anymore. We need to stop that. We also like, I don't think we really need to super hype up the white coming out story, but that's just me. I was so underwhelmed with this book. I didn't like half the characters. I think Leah 
is maybe the worst character I've ever read because she just sucks and I guess we're supposed to like her but I don't know why because she's just kind of mean and nasty and like she should be the antagonist of the book based on how she's written. She'd be the antagonist of my life because I'd want her out. <laughs> this was just another really bland white cis guy coming out story where the character sucked and there was blackmail involved and there's so many of those or there was at one point and I'm just done. I'm done. We don't need that story anymore. Like as as a queer who came out 10 years ago, I didn't need this story 10 years ago and I don't need this story now. I need stories about queer people doing things that don't involve being blackmailed and having things done to them until they come out. Like I want queer people doing fun things. So I don't know why this book is hyped up. I don't know why it was hyped up like even three years ago because we didn't need this kind of book anymore. Then the next Becky Albertalli book I tried to read was The Upside of Unrequited and I got so bored I DNF'd it like maybe 10% of the way in because I just didn't care. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the story. It wasn't for me so it left. And of course the third Becky Albertalli book that I tried to read was What If It's Us where she buddy wrote it with Adam Silvera and without having known beforehand which character was written by which author I knew. I was like, hmm, this character who's written terribly has a personality that sucks and is just like all around annoying was Becky Albertalli's character. I called it before I knew and I looked and I'm like, oh, I'm so shocked. The character that sucks is Becky Albertalli. Like, why? Why does she insist on writing bad characters? Is it because she's a bad writer? You tell me. <laughs> I'm, this is like the one author that I got mad about because I just don't understand the hype around her work when it's not good. And there are way more interesting books to read than these. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad about it. Like the whole point of What If It's Us was Becky Albertalli's character ruining everything and then Adam Silvera's character kind of having to be like, yeah, I guess it works anyway. This doesn't make any sense now because I don't really like you, but I'm just gonna force it. It was awful. Becky Albertalli's writing is not for me. Her characters are not for me. Her plots are not for me. I truly am not completely sure how she got into this whole industry. I'm sorry. I'm not that sorry. And yeah, those are the five authors I will no longer be reading because I just don't vibe with their work. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down below authors that you just don't vibe with, like, or authors you hate. I truly don't care. I don't want to hear about like authors who have a bunch of drama because that's different than just not vibing with an author's work. And that's like a, d a different conversation that I'm not having here today. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you whenever I do the next video.